Vladimir Putin seems determined to become the supervillain of the 2020s. Could he also be a massively wealthy oligarch worth hundreds of billions that he spends on yachts, planes, cars, and his own private biker gang? Only one way to find out. While Putin is steadfast in his claims that he lives a relatively mundane life by head of state standards, there are all kinds of rumors that Putin lives to the kind of excess you normally only see in something like the Wolf of Wall Street. That includes a mansion that's supposedly worth over a billion with 18 other houses also linked to him. As far as what's in those garages go, frankly, he still doesn't have enough houses. That's because he's rumored to have over 700 cars in his possession. Add to that the rumored 58 aircraft, the multiple helicopters, and so much more. And you get a picture of a man who spends money like Nicholas Cage in the 90s. Still, with a person like Putin, there's no way of knowing where the rumors and subterfuge end and reality begins. As far as the cars we do know about, it's clear that Putin loves to ride in a limousine and be photographed doing so. That includes his latest prize, which just screams, I think I'm the king of the world. That would be his Aris Sanat limousine. This beautiful ride is worth upwards of $1.2 million. Despite being a limo, this car can hit speeds of over 150 miles per hour. It's clear that he considers this car to be something of a flex on other world leaders. He simply loves being photographed either riding or behind the wheel himself. He's also got a gazelle limousine that's something special indeed. Sure, it just looks like a classic limo, but this $160,000 car is one of a kind. It was made specifically for Putin himself. As you would expect, seeing as this is Putin's private ride, there's not much as far as specs go. It would defeat the whole purpose of having a private ride if we did. You've gotta believe that these cars are just decked out with bulletproofing, bug proofing, and probably everything short of having its own machine gun like Nick Fury's Chevy Tahoe. As much as Putin loves him a limo, he's also got an affinity for the type of car that's literally the opposite. He loves affordable, off-road vehicles you would expect a well-off suburban dad to own. For instance, he's got a Mercedes ML500. This plain-looking vehicle is only worth around 46000 This baby can still hit around 150 miles per hour. Then there's his Lada Nivea. A 4x4. It's a $25,000 ride that goes up to 87 miles per hour. Both of these cars honestly paint a very different picture of the Russian leader. Does he have a secret private life where he's just known as Vlad the Off-Road Trucker? I sincerely hope so. Vladimir Putin isn't as open about his love of sports cars, but he's been seen with a few amazing rides worthy of being in a Fast and Furious movie. He has his very own Lada Vesta sedan. This lime green sports car is worth over $11,000. It can hit speeds of over 120 miles per hour. Seeing his face around this baby, you just know he's hit that 120 at least once just to know that he'd done it. If I had to guess, I'd say that his secret garage that holds supposedly hundreds upon hundreds of cars has a lot more cars like this one than it does off-road suburban dad cars. I would bet you anything that his garage rivals the likes of Jay Leno's legendary car collection that's famously worth over 50 million dollars. As you would expect at this point, Putin doesn't exactly fly coach. He has a private airplane known colloquially as the Flying Kremlin. It's a jet worth over $700 million. He flies in a Ilyushin IL-96-300PU. This plane is as classy as classy gets. Luxurious bedrooms, epic meeting rooms, a fully stocked gym, a fully stocked bar with top shelf whiskey that is Putin's favorite, and toilets that are literally gold plated. While that sounds like quite a lot even by private jet standards, this is basically a flying apartment for Putin. 
he has spent more time in the air than literally any other Russian leader ever has. Of course, while that seems to be a hefty price for a jet, the Air Force One replacement for the President of the United States is projected to cost over $3.9 billion. So in this case, Putin isn't actually the big spender. What's interesting about Putin's flight plan, though, is that he's never alone in the air. Putin's jet is actually flanked by three identical planes. This is a massive form of high-flying subterfuge. No one is allowed to know just which plane holds the real Russian president. Even the crew of each plane doesn't know if Putin was going to be riding on it until it's takeoff time. And people say he's paranoid. Wait, wait, wait. That might just throw our entire budget into question here. If no one knows which of these planes is the real flying Kremlin that day, then it stands to reason that each one has to have identical amenities. So instead of one $716 million plane, does he, in fact, have four? That would be a fleet worth $2,864,000,000. We may just have to accept that this is one of many, many Putin mysteries we'll likely never get an answer to. I will say this though, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that each and every one of those planes has golden toilet seats. The man does not settle for less. By far the scariest plane used by Putin is the so-called Doomsday Plane. That's because it was literally designed to continue to function in case of nuclear Armageddon. The idea here is that while the worst global conflict imaginable is happening, Vladimir Putin will still be flying through the skies, commanding Russia in safety. In basic terms, this horror movie plot of an aircraft is an IL-80 Max Dome. This multi-million dollar plane has a a cruising speed of 530 miles per hour. By all accounts, it looks like a normal plane, with one notable exception. The top of the plane has a small bump that sort of makes it look like a giant flying dolphin. This is actually an advanced communications suite that is designed to continue working despite horrible radiation. While this is certainly impressive as far as terrifying planes are concerned, the Doomsday plane doesn't really get a lot of use. For the most part, it's used for demonstrations and celebrations. It's more of a status symbol than anything else. An utterly terrifying status symbol. Putin doesn't just love fast cars and luxurious jets, though. He's also got a thing for bikes and biker gangs. In particular, Putin loves to ride Harleys. He rides Harley trikes that go around twenty dollars to $50,000. These bikes can hit usually over 100 miles per hour, though it doesn't seem like he rides his at anywhere near that speed. He usually rides with the controversial Russian motorcycle club known as the Night Wolves. They have a close relationship with Putin, even going so far as to join in the invasion against Ukraine. This relationship is definitely a two-way street, though. The Russian government has been accused multiple times of directly funding the group to the tune of millions. Specifically, 56 million rubles was said to go straight from the government to the club. Then 12 million rubles were donated to them from the government to build a, quote, Patriot Youth Center. A lot of people are avid motorcycle enthusiasts, but few go so far as to fund their own biker gang just to go out with. That's true commitment. For their close ties to Putin, the group has been dubbed Putin's Angels. Something tells me they won't be getting patches that say that anytime soon. Of course, when it comes to the internet's favorite way Putin gets around, it's all about the horses. By far, the most famous image of Putin is the one where he's shirtless riding a horse. It's not hard to see why. He does not ever seem to be a relaxed guy, but on a horse, he looks surprisingly chill. This infamous picture sweeping the world was no accident either. It was designed as a way to show off Putin's toughness, along with other events like when he dropped himself into freezing cold water, quote, for inspiration. While Putin is very clear about his love for dogs, he's owned at least seven, his stable is a bit of a mystery. It's clear that Putin has a great passion for horses, but officially he owns none, though he's rumored to have many thoroughbreds, which in Russia can go for thousands. 
In particular, an Akulteki is seen in Russia for prices of over a hundred thousand dollars. Of course, horses don't seem to quite feel the same way about Putin. In 2019, Putin decided to mark International Women's Day by riding alongside a group of female police officers. During the photo shoot, Putin actually lost control of his horse and it started walking backwards, utterly ruining the shot. He himself even admitted that horses don't seem to want to listen to him. One evidently straight up tossed him into the dirt. According to him, they were once filming me, I was training, and it happened that the horse stopped in front of a barrier and I did a somersault. Look guys, I've looked and looked, but it appears that the footage of this is long gone. The best I've got is Putin falling on the ice in front of a bunch of hockey players. That's something at least. Perhaps the most infamous yacht in the world right now is the Scheherazade, allegedly Vladimir Putin's yacht. That is assuming that Putin is the kind of guy who would have an absolutely astounding $700 million masterpiece. From its conception, it was clear that Scheherazade was going to be famous. The famous company Lursen Yachts of Germany set about creating one of the largest yachts ever constructed. During this time, it went by the code name Lightning. What they produced was perhaps their ultimate work of art. It features a classic black and white color scheme and a bow that seems to cut through the water like a knife. As far as stats go, it sits at 10 tons with a top speed of 19 knots. It can accommodate 18 guests in 9 cabins along with 40 crew members in 20 cabins. The cabins include two luxury VIP suites with walk-in closets, studies, and dressing rooms. It's got a ton of ridiculous super yacht amenities too. They include not one but two helicopter decks, then there's the spa, the Turkish bath, a cryo therapy chamber, a hydro massage room, a grand dining room, a gym, and of course, gold plated bathrooms. One thing it doesn't have is an outdoor pool. The owners evidently want privacy more than anything else, so an outdoor pool wasn't included. Though there is a retractable dance floor with a pool underneath. What was it supposed to have? No pool? That is a lot to cram into one ship. But you need to understand just how big Scheherazade is. Imagine a standard football field. It's 360 feet long, right? Scheherazade is 459 feet long. You might be thinking, that's gotta be the longest yacht in the world. Nope. It is in the top 25, but it's in about the 16th place. Yeah, football fields don't seem quite so big now, do they? Now, that $700 million price tag makes a lot more sense. Even that is likely shorting it. This is a custom job. There's no telling how much more went into getting this ship to water. It's easy to think that it could have cost upwards of 800 to maybe even 900 million. Then there's the fortunate costs just to run it. It's been reported that the annual running cost for Scheherazade is around 50 to 75 million. This is definitely not a cheap hobby, no matter where in the world you are. Despite all of this undeniable excellence, the most famous thing about Scheherazade is the controversy around who actually owns the ship. The captain has always maintained that not only does the ship absolutely not belong to Vladimir Putin, but that he has never stepped on board. Officially, the ship is said to be owned by Edward Kudenatov, a Russian oil magnate. Many have said that this is basically a ruse from the notoriously secretive Russian leader. Either way, the ship was the focal point when it came to the international seizure of Russian yachts around the world. Many countries of the world are protesting Russia's invasion of Ukraine by imposing enormous sanctions on Russian oligarchs and businesses across the world. One of the most heavily publicized ways that they have been targeted is by seizing several of the most enormous yachts ever seen by man. It's been so widespread that several Russian yachts have actually 
disappeared. Scheherazade was not one of these ships. In fact, it held its ground in Italy, practically daring someone to try something. The heavily sensationalized story is that the crew, which included members of Russian Secret Service, were replaced by heavily armed guards who stalked the yacht day and night. It looked like the standoff between authorities and the mysterious super yacht would just continue before perhaps the most famous world leader right now, Zelensky, publicly called the yacht out by name. Specifically, he said, block all their real estate accounts and yachts from Scheherazade to the smallest ones. After getting publicly called out, Italy acted. In early May, authorities officially seized the ship as it was rumored to be preparing to set sail. Whether it's Putin's yacht or not doesn't really matter anymore. This beauty won't be seeing the open water anytime soon. Putin has also taken a highly publicized ride beneath the waves too. Putin took a multi-million dollar Dutch mini-sub deep into the ocean. He went under the sea to view a shipwreck off the coast of the Crimean Peninsula. He actually plunged to a depth of 83 meters seated alongside the pilot. While it was cool that he got to see a sunken galleon that was transporting civilian cargo, it was mainly a publicity stunt. He managed to talk more about how impressive the 83 meters was than the galleon he went to go see. So after we've seen all that, the question has to be asked. How much does Putin actually have? Trying to pin down Vladimir Putin's exact wealth is hard to do. Officially, Putin is a civil servant with a modest salary of $140,000 a year. In comparison, the United States president has a yearly salary of about $400,000 with money on top of that. He's also declared only one home, an 800 square foot apartment in St. Petersburg. Then there's his garage that is said to only include two Soviet era cars and an off-road truck. By official accounts, Putin isn't even a billionaire. He's just a moderately wealthy politician whose power comes from his position, not his bank account. His rumored wealth is far beyond that, though. Some believe that Putin may actually be the world's richest man, only in secret. Officially, the richest man in the world is Elon Musk with a net worth of over $215 billion. Bill Browder, an investor who has done a ton of business in Russia, has his own estimation about Putin's wealth. He testified before Congress that he believes Putin's wealth is also over $200 billion, that he's created a vast fortune from sketchy means. He said that the wealth came as a result of extortion and massive theft from state funds. So now that we know what Putin's decadent life is supposedly like, do we really think that he's low-key got Elon beat for the gold? Russia is reportedly spending 900 million dollars a day in Ukraine, so Putin might not be getting any fancy cars or new biker gangs this year.